Okay, good morning folks. It's Humble Dragon again coming at you with some more um, basics, hashing out the basics. Um, the uh, Everybody has this kata. This is the kata that I'm trying to go through and say that there's a lot more to it. There's a lot more in inside that basic kata that you can possibly imagine unless you start studying, you know, the practical application of the kata, which is called bunkai. And I'm not the only one that's out there doing this. As a matter of fact, I'm doing this on a small scale. There's a lot of great people out there. And I just made a list. I'm going to sh throw a shout out to all these people. So if you're looking into practical karate and, and how traditional martial arts like karate, tang sudo, and, 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 uh, and even taekwondo and stuff like that, the basics of all those arts will um, be ap applicable, you know, in self-defense. But anyway, I I'm going to... Right off the, at the top of the list is Ian Abernathy, okay? Google him, check him out. He rebreathed life into the kata for me. Um, Lee Sims, spelled L-E-I-G-H, S-I-M-M-S. Lee Sims is doing some really great stuff with practical karate. Andy Allen's doing some amazing stuff with, like, kids, you know? He teaches at a, at a high school level, at a, at a real campus in Canada, you know? It's great. I, I think the Americans should inherit something like that. I think karate would be great in school systems, but that's here nor there. Uh, and Chris Hansen with Karate Unity, you know, got some really cool stuff. And, and he's he's creating, you know, he's bringing the people, uh, the martial arts people together, regardless of style. He's saying, look, you know, we can all we all have something to bring to the table. I think that's great. Um, Paul Enfield, okay. E N F I E L D shows some really cool stuff, really cool application for the Goju Ru styles of the kata, um, and I mean that's just that's just to name a few. There's a lot of them out there, you know. So I'm not the only one. But anyway, uh, now that I gave everybody a plug, I'm gonna hash through some basics again. And that first kata, you know, I call it Kion kata. I've heard it called. Tego One, I've heard it called Kichu Jong Ilbu, uh, several different names, and it's just in kind of in an eye pattern where there's just low blocks and center punches. But that movement in the kata makes it means so much more. But what I'd like to talk about is I already, I already talked about putting the hand on the ear. You know what that could be is like a hook punch, you know, and then dropping the down block either to clear the arm or hit the carotid artery or something when you're up in close. You know, this is all in close stuff. The other reason we put our hand on our ear and then there's a 180 degree turn in the contest because what we'll do is we'll, you know, end up here and turn 180 degrees and throw a low block. Again, it is not because your spidey sense is kicking in and you're thinking, oh look, somebody's coming behind me. Low block, center punch. Again, throw that out. Okay, that's one step sparring stuff. It's good for children to teach them coordination, but once you start understanding the bunkai of the kata, you need to start thinking practically, okay? So, and because we are a striking art, I'm gonna show you how to strike with different parts of your body in that movement, okay? So, here, in close, I'm coming across, I'm gonna strike with the forearm, and then grab whatever I can, mouth, nose, eye, hair, jacket, okay, and turn 180 degrees. Okay, I didn't want to throw a bottle on the floor, but the, the thing is, is that's, that's pulling your opponent off balance and turning a whole 180 degrees, you know, so that's that 180 degree turn in the kata where we throw our hand down, okay? Um, so it all has practical application. I've yacked enough. I've given everybody a plug. I'm hoping everybody's going to have a great week. Happy Monday, y'all. This is Humble Dragon. Peace out.